Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I allegedly, and uh, I've got a good one for you today. Just in Newport Beach, at the channel, everybody's having a good time in the water, and uh, so much to cover. So many cracks in the economy. So much happening with real estate news. Just a ton of stuff to cover for you today. And uh, before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the like button on the video. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification. And uh, today guys, foreclosure.com. If you're interested in the foreclosure uh, market, if you're looking at short sales, you wanna see bankruptcy sales, you just want deals on real estate, you can sign up for foreclosure.com. Seven day link below, it's free to sign up. I love this site because you can get a uh, email warning if there's something changes in your zip code or your area that you're you're particularly interested in you can sign up for that uh, but let's get into it real estate right now is off orange county register is our local paper they just notified us that sales in june were off uh 25 percent it's the worst june since 1988 Okay, unbelievable guys, absolutely unbelievable. Things are not going well in the real estate market right now. Now think about this, with this also, you're seeing house payments go up 44% here in Southern California alone. It gets nuts guys, when, when do people sit there and say, enough is enough, I'm not gonna put up with this. So we've seen this change quite a bit, but the payments, that they came up with this in, the, in this story. You guys have to hear this because the, the the figures are absolutely staggering. And I have to, you know, go through this with you guys just so you can hear this. Because, you know, people when they think of a house payment, you're thinking, oh, my mortgage is 200,000, 300,000. How about here in Orange County, it's a million dollars is the average mortgage right now. Think about this, Los Angeles County, the average house payment right now Okay, $3,796. The average loan, $860,000. That is lunacy, guys. That, that's nuts for LA County, but that's what it is. Now here in Orange County, $4,525 with the average loan amount at $1,050,000. Uh, $1, Hello, okay, a, a million dollars. How do you sleep at night knowing that you own a million bucks? And then Riverside County, which is the closest county next to us, uh, $2,624 a month house payment with a $594,500 loan. Guys, these numbers are absolutely staggering, but what's, what's off is that sales are off. They're off 25%. Now, I spoke to my friend in the foreclosure industry, and Jay has been doing this for 25 years okay, that he's been running his own gig but Jay is an absolute expert Jay is the guy that has done everything from posting houses to um, selling houses on the, the courthouse steps you know how when people go to foreclosure that's what Jay does but we were talking about this how bad is it gonna get Jay how bad is real estate and he said Dan we're in kind of a holding pattern right now that's very interesting we are not seeing the houses go to foreclosure right now the banks are giving these people every opportunity to get themselves out of this so working deals working deals and they want to do everything they can not to have bank owned property go back to the banks right now so crazy now will that eventually stop yes but he has a lot of houses that they post in other words this house is in foreclosure and they post those for the sale, but something happens and they get canceled. They work out a deal with the bank, the people come up with the money, something. And there's a myriad of reasons as to why these houses can get kicked out of foreclosure and not go through with the foreclosure process. So with that being said, he's seeing a lot of this happen. Now, he also thinks that there's gonna be a major shift after the midterms and that eventually these banks are gonna have to face the music and you know let the hammer fall and everything you know just crash the way it's supposed to but 
they're doing everything they can right now to prop this up and still getting people in these loans. Now, what they're seeing right now also is that the majority of these people are hitting the crack pipe and going with the adjustable rate mortgages because they can't afford the uh, a regular fixed rate loan. Now, here's the thing. In the last month, the majority of the loans that were fixed rate were written at 5.25%. Again, much higher than they were in the past compared to 4.25 uh, just a month before. So this numbers are staggering, guys. These people are paying more and more for these houses. And again, do the math and all this stuff. Look at the figures, look at that story and look where it's at. Ooh. We've been over here before, guys, but the tide is really high today. So you can see how flat the dock is right now. So let's walk over here. Coming up. See how flat this is, guys? It's just, there's, you know, you've got, you've got the tide much higher than it has been in the past. But right now when it comes to these short sales and it comes to uh, uh, people getting foreclosed on just not happening and then when it comes to commercial real estate what you're seeing with commercial real estate is they're doing everything they can to put the people off from uh, getting foreclosed on with commercial real estate and once again you know you can't have a building that is vacant, that nobody's making a payment on because the mortgage due is due. Someone's got to make that payment. Not every building, especially here in Orange County, is paid off. But not everybody's got the ability to have a cash-free, you know, a, a debt-free building. So very interesting that you're seeing this. Very interesting to get his perspective on this also because it's nuts to think about uh, the fact that the foreclosures here are not happening like they have in the past and they're kind of in a holding pattern right now. What are you guys seeing in your area? Now you can sit there and say, the reason why they're not happening Dan, is because people are making their payments. No, they're not. There's a lot of people behind in their payments. Look at foreclosure.com guys. Look at the people that are in pre-foreclosure. Those are people that are three months behind but they haven't filed the notice yet. That, that grows week to week. So, you know, eventually these properties are gonna come to the market and be sold and get sent back to the bank. He gave me a perfect example where some of these places are a million five and there's no bids at the sale. And with that, when they go to auction, that is, with that, then they get sent back to the bank. Fascinating stuff, guys. But with that, you're gonna see more and more of this happening. And uh, it's just a matter of time. So share your thoughts and all this stuff, guys. Now, when it comes to labor, there's a ton of stories that uh, we all need to take a look at. First time unemployment job claims hit an eight month high with this last week's uh, uh, recorded filings for first time claims. 251,000 people filed for claims for unemployment, but it's at an eight month high. Up 7,000 more than they thought. Again, this is the beginning of the end. The labor force in general is making huge changes right now. People are sick of working at these jobs and there's gonna be massive changes to the labor force in the coming months. And you can sit there and believe, oh, this is serious, it's not. Uh, I don't believe that this is gonna happen, Dan. I think that everything is fine. But an aging workforce, people that are older, my age and above, are sick of working for younger people. They're also doing everything they can to retire and get out of this rat race any way that they can. Now, think about this, Ford. Ford just announced that uh, they're going to lay off 26% of their salaried employees. Why, why is that guys? Why would they be laying off 26% of their salaried employees? The electric car is the future, la 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 la, everybody needs to make cars. That's crazy guys, but you know, the thing that floors me is Tesla stock is so high and you wonder this, but you've got somebody like Ford Motor Company that is going to lay off 25% of their staff. Guys, this is, this is crazy. This is the beginning 
of the end of it, okay? Keystone. Keystone is a company that makes motorhomes. Huge Indiana employer. They just announced that they're closing two facilities and laying off 346 people. 346 people are losing their jobs. Now, this is one thing that's fascinating. Is I do stuff like this and I get stories like this. You get educated on what they have to do. And in, in states like this, they have to notify, in Indiana, they have to notify the state that we're going to have a massive layoff. These people have to be given 60 days notice that they're going to lose their jobs. What does that do, guys? Hey, the end of the world's happening in two months for you. Congratulations, the plant's gonna be closed. But why is that? People are not uh, buying the motorhomes the way that they thought. Gas is killing that industry. This is motorhome season, guys. This is when everybody should be buying these motorhomes like they're going out of style and they cannot make them and the writing is on the wall and also interest rates going up. This isn't like financing a house, guys. You got a higher interest rate when you buy a motorhome and uh, people know it and with that, they're paying much higher rates than they were in the past and pricing themselves right out of the market to where they can't uh, afford this. You know what? We're going to walk down to the nice area a few blocks up and show you guys something up there. But share your thoughts and all this stuff. Now, the repossessions for motorhomes, those are higher now too as a result of the economy and during this time of the year. So starting to see cracks everywhere. And with real estate, you know, it's, it's not bad yet, okay? And prices are still high, but you can't justify these prices right now. You can't, you know, these motorhomes, and you're gonna see a glut of this. The toys that were for sale after 2008, when everything happened, 2010, 2011, they couldn't give this stuff away. You'd go on the side of the road and people in the mortgage industry, in the housing industry, construction industry, people had all these toys and they had to just give them away, basically, to make ends meet. You're gonna see that again, mark my words. Because I'm already starting to see it in certain places where we're starting to see certain exotic cars and dune buggies and stuff like that for sale that you wouldn't see, you know, you didn't see previously. So let me go up a few blocks, get myself into a nicer area for you. But share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. Let me know what you think about all this. One major problem in metropolitan cities is the glut of empty office space. And it's not just one community, it's around the country. Great article out of the Wall Street Journal was talking about how so many cities don't know what they're gonna do with the empty office space because people, let's face it, don't wanna go back to an office. When you look at major cities like LA, uh, New York, Chicago, where people have to commute long distances also to get there, San Francisco, let's use that one too. People are sick and tired of that. It's the worst part of the day. Where it used to be five years ago, it was, oh, this is the price to get the job in the city, you gotta commute. Well, it sucks, people hate it. People hate it with a passion. And when you hear the stories of crime and you hear the stories of the problem with the subways and the problem with the L and with everything else that people have to do, you know, BART, all that stuff, it is an absolute mess that people want to avoid. Now, employers are doing anything they can right now to romance people back to the office. Free lunch, free coffee, I'm, which I get a kick out of, like that's gonna make somebody, you know, have a two hour commute because they may get uh, a sandwich for free. So people are turning this down. And also you're seeing smaller cities like in Utah and places like that, that are offering incentives for companies to move there completely. There has been such a shift since the health crisis started with how people work and how people work remotely. I had dinner last night with a med tech firm that was overtaken by a large biotech company. And they went from about 60 employees to almost 5,000 employees. And uh, just a completely different way of operating. But they have people around the world now that they do business with and they have salaries that they negotiate with these people, and it's just completely different. But you better be a self-starter. They're paying these people an absolute ton of money. The salaries that they discussed with these people were staggering. 
to say the least. But these people um, don't have to commute. Uh, how about this? The sales manager of the company is a great guy. I've known this guy for years. Him and his wife lived here in Southern California. She's French. They're moving to France next week. And this guy can work from anywhere. So, you know, we tried Southern California for him. We're gonna go move to France for me and the kids. So, hopping on a plane next week and moving to France, but he can be sales manager everywhere. Now, I was fascinated by that. What are you gonna do about the time change? What's the difference between France and Australia? And we talked about all that here. And uh, I'll never forget at Christmas time, a few years back, he was in France and it was something like 10 a.m. You know, it was it was like an 11 hour, like like 5 a.m. in the morning to uh, like, like my 5 p.m. was his like 5 a.m., something like that. But crazy, but they're gonna allow that. So share your thoughts on this stuff, guys, because people don't wanna go to the office, but then what do you do with all this office space? The glut of office space just can't sit there. Someone's gotta make those, those mortgage payments on those buildings. These big companies that have dumped this property, how long can they keep that? How long can they keep it on the books till it's not a problem? That's what's fascinating. But the, the story's below, and uh, I just think that, man, this is the, the calm before the storm with all this stuff. I'm back over on West Bay Street in Newport. I love this area. You've got the, the yacht club here and uh, just got a really quiet area that's on the back bay and we'll circle around for you guys to see this. A uh, couple things, think about this. I love silver, I love physical silver. I love to buy it, I love silver mining, I love silver stocks, I love everything about silver. If you knew the manufacturing uh, numbers of silver and how much it's used in industrial usage, you guys would buy this too because silver is just, it's in such a limited supply. There is a woman that bought a billion dollars worth of silver eagles. This is crazy. Now, I would say, oh, this is nonsense. You know, this is, this is totally just a made up, you know, wives tale about this woman and that's just, totally fake well it's got a name attached to it it's got a guy named Andy Sheckman uh, from Miles Franklin who is an absolute player of all players uh, in the metals industry and Andy's the one that brokered the deal and the billionaire woman this Texas billionaire woman by the way isn't this beautiful look at how green this is and just lush this Texas billionaire woman she said I want people to know I bought this doesn't want her name out but let them know I'm gonna buy another billion dollars now Here's the thing. It is anticipated that silver is going to drop in price. It is anticipated that gold is going to drop in price. Now, talk to an expert today who thinks that gold is going to go above $2,000 again, and we're going to see that in the next 60 days. Hopefully he's right. But here's the thing. If silver dropped to $5 an ounce, and oh, you should buy it. You should definitely buy it. You should buy it if it drops to $15 an ounce, $10 an ounce, you should buy it if you can get your hands on it. The fact that this woman spent a billion dollars in this, clearly she thinks that there is a market for silver in the future and that it's going to be something that's going to be a huge investment. So share your thoughts on this stuff. But, uh, you know, I always believe in looking at what the super wealthy do. If you do that, you know, why would this person be putting their money? Why would they throw their money at this worthless metal? Well, because it's not worthless, because it's been God's money forever, and it will be. Now, you can hear the arguments about how gold is so much better, and it's worth so much more, and it takes so many ounces to equal an ounce of gold. Great, okay? Make your own decision on that stuff. If you can get physical gold and physical silver right now, get your hands on it. Now, to talk about how broke people are right now, think about this. AT&T, the cell phone company, AT&T um, was just talking about how people cannot afford to pay their cell phone bills. And they're seeing a rash of people that are out right now putting off paying their cell phone bills like they've never seen before. And they're gonna have a write down 
uh, on their finances of $2 billion of their cash right now. That is insane, guys. That is an absolute, that number, when you hear that is absolutely staggering to think about. But people are broke. People put off things like their cell phones and people are also calling to get the cell phone plans reduced. And the, you know, they gotta get the latest iPhone. I gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it. Okay, your payment's gonna be X, who cares? You know, that's how most people do it. But right now they're putting off making those payments. Same thing with cable TV. You're seeing uh, cable TV get extended. This is also the Netflix problem. You know, if somebody has a Netflix bill and now they're talking about having, you know, Netflix be cheaper uh, because they're gonna have ads on it. I've had, I've had literally half a dozen people in the last week said they don't care. They'll pay less money to keep Netflix to have ads on it. Now, Netflix also announced that if you share a password with somebody else, that it's gonna cost you $2.99 a month. They're gonna bill people for this. Gosh, is that gonna be great to see this? Now, again, you know, my family's had the same Netflix account forever. So it's gonna be interesting when you have people living in different locations logging in and how that's, what's gonna be allowed. You know, think about it. If I log into my phone from here, I can go to Netflix right now and sit here on the water and watch this. How do, how do they know what account I'm tied to or what internet? Are they gonna use the ISP? It's, it's ridiculous when you think about that. But uh, share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys, because it is a bad sign for the economy when people cannot pay for their cell phone bill. The kiss of death. People are cutting back in every way, shape, and form. The office rents and the people not commuting. I know so many people that don't want the headache of traffic. Where guys like me, I don't care. I'll drive to the moon. I don't just don't care. That's what I do. It's what I've done forever. So when you hear uh, these people that don't want to hop on the train and don't want to do that, that's, you know, the shape of things to come. But what do you do with all that empty office space? Million dollar listing in New York. They're not having that show right now. Why not? Well, because of the problems that people are having with real estate in New York and how the market is changing right now. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see if they keep, look at this guys, isn't this beautiful? We'll see if they keep uh, the LA show or not. It'll be nice to see if that, how that plays out. Okay, so share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. By the way, these guys are doing a yard work on the $17 million house. Okay. Looking good, guys. So. Well, I want the signs gone. Ooh, guys, the signs gone from this house. So. Wow, somebody bought the house. Okay, no more I allegedly party house, guys. Life just won't be the same without that $17 million house to, to hang out at. You guys can think I'm nuts. This is, this is insane. This is beautiful property. It's got this beautiful ficus tree or whatever this tree is. It's not a ficus tree. Ficus trees are horrible for the plumbing. But look at this, guys. This is just insane. Isn't that nice? So... Share your thoughts on this. We'll get a new house, guys. Okay? We'll, we'll work on that next week. Here's a couple interesting things. There's a man named uh, Mark Spitznagel who runs Universe Investments. We heard about this guy a couple months ago because this guy invests in Black Swan events. That's what his hedge fund does. He is convinced that the Fed is creating a lot of these problems that we're experiencing right now. And if the Fed just calm down and let the chips fall where they may, that we would be in much better position with the economy. And eventually the stock market's gonna crash, so why not just let it happen now? But he also compared this kind of brilliantly to deforestation, that forest fires are part of life. And you know, whether it's a city nearby that causes a forest fire or if you have something like a lightning strike okay through history that's done and it's wiped out forests and they grow back 
and they grow back stronger. But great story, great advice on this. It's kind of fascinating the way that this guy described it. But, uh, you know, you're starting to see things, people, enough is enough with the way that the Fed's handling this. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Fed does with interest rates. They're doing nothing to slow down inflation because he thinks, Martin, Mr. Spitznagel, thinks that inflation is going to be here for years to come and that there is no end in sight for this. So that's fascinating. The other thing is there is a contractor that delivers for FedEx. Now, I didn't know this. I thought FedEx delivered their own stuff. You know, they had their own trucks. Trucks are painted. No, they use contractors for that. And this guy that owns Root Consultants, Spencer Patton, he's the largest company out there that delivers for FedEx. He's got 275 employees. He's got 280 trucks that this guy has that he delivers uh, with. And he is convinced that you're going to see more and more ground delivery companies go out of business between now and he picked the date, November 25th, which is basically Thanksgiving. Between now and Thanksgiving, he sees nothing but problems for the ground delivery business uh, across the country. And if this is not fixed, he says that we're going to see uh, this grind to a halt. Now, here's the thing. Mr. Patton, this guy runs his own trade show, which was what got me connected to all this. And what they're going to do with his own trade show for FedEx contractors. And uh, I had heard once about an Ace Hardware. They have a Ace Hardware trade show every year that vendors go and pitch Ace Hardware and all the employees and different store owners and things like that go to this store, uh, this uh, conference and pick things for their store. Well, they have an event like this for FedEx delivery. They want to have a 10 person panel that's going to negotiate with FedEx to get them 25 cents more per drop off and 50 cents more for long haul trucking. It's going to be fascinating to see if they pull this off, but this guy said, if you don't negotiate and give us more money, we're going to go out of business. We cannot afford to run our companies this way, and uh, you're going to see ground transportation go to a halt. So, guys, think about this. Cell phones are messed up. People can't afford to pay for it. The, the FedEx delivery guys out there that I thought they all work for FedEx. No, they're independent companies, and these guys are in deep trouble because they need a raise, which is only going to cost us more to get things shipped. So share your thoughts and all this stuff, guys, because this is fascinating stuff to say the least. I'm gonna finish this video with these last couple stories. And uh, first things first, you've got Amazon that just bought a company called One Medical for $3.9 billion. That One Medical has been touted as the Netflix of the medical industry. Uh, Amazon bought a company that does telemedicine in 2020 and uh, now they bought One Medical, and they clearly want to be in the medical space. They have a pharmaceutical company that you can buy drugs online and they will deliver them to your front door, but uh, they want to be your medical company. They want to be your one stop for everything. Whether that'll work or not, we will see, but uh, again, we'll see if it works. Then there's Coinbase. There were three individuals that were associated with Coinbase. The crypto exchange these guys just got tried uh, and uh, not tried but they just got charged and arrested for insider trading uh, Ishwan Wa uh, Wani this guy worked at Coinbase and as coins would get announced that they were going to be added to the exchange these geniuses went out and bought them on other exchanges through different accounts and got caught because they talked about it amongst themselves these three idiots his brother and this other guy and they made a million and a half dollars on this and again if you don't think that the trouble with insider trading and uh you know the sec type problems are going to not you know they're going to somehow escape cryptocurrencies you guys are kidding yourselves because this is in its infancy but this is the type of stuff that's happened over and over again and these people benefited knowing what coins were going to be added to coinbase in advance and made all that money. Please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to, uh, to subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget guys, if you're interested in short sales, you're interested in bankruptcy sales, getting deals on houses, take a look at foreclosure.com. The, the coolest thing on there is the email alerts. If there's a, a particular neighborhood or, or zip code that you like, you can set up an email alert 
and it will let you know if there's anything that comes up in your area. Take a look at the link below and get a seven day trial for free. Uh, onward and upward guys, I will see you guys very soon.